This conference will now be recorded. All right, good evening. Tonight is the 2021 uh, schedulers training for the NCJLA. We're going to uh, talk about the typical scheduling preparation that a club would go through. And then we're gonna talk about some new things for 2021. We're gonna be moving to an online format. And then we'll talk about some special considerations and things that are specific to uh, this season, especially since we have um, you know, a current pandemic right now. Uh, let's get started. So timeline, uh, every year we present you guys with a timeline on how uh, scheduling will flow. I do want to emphasize that you know, this year is unlike any other, and you know, you'll hear, hear me say a lot through this uh, training that we're gonna be flexible. And I hope that all of you um, keep that in mind. You know, we're gonna do our best to stick to a, a schedule, but uh, it could change. So right now, our timeline, we have uh, December 19th is when we'll open up for clubs to enter in dates where they can host a game. Uh, and then January 3rd, that's when our team registration will close. I do want to note that the NCJLA will allow late registration, uh, but you know you, you might get left out of scheduling or you know be hard to find schedulers information just because um, we're going to try to stick with the January 3rd date of closing, and uh, that way we know who needs to schedule. January 1st. Fourth, we are going to make sure that all the schedulers contact information is collected. We'll post that information and the teams to the NCJLA website. We will also make sure that all of the dates where you can host a game are entered uh, so that all the other teams in your region can see the dates that you would like to have home games. On January 5th, we will open up A and high school team online scheduling. We're going to start with the girls first from 6 to 7 p.m. and then boys from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, this could end up uh, being over, you know, well, one to two days, but, uh, you know, this is the fourth year, I believe, that the A and high school have done online scheduling, so I'm confident that uh, these experienced schedulers will do just fine with having um, everything opened up on one night and then continue to schedule the rest of the week. On January 6th, we have uh, the first online scheduling meeting for the Central West Boys. Uh, that is our largest concentration of boys 14U to 8U. So they will be the first ones to go. January 7th, we'll have the online scheduling meetings for the Sacramento region from six to nine and then the Northwest region from six to nine uh, at the same time. I do wanna emphasize that, you know, if the region gets the scheduling done sooner than that, there's no reason to stay on till nine. Uh, you know, sometimes schedules just come together quickly. So um, the better you can work together, the sooner you can end the session. January 8th, we have the online scheduling meeting for the Southwest region from seven to nine. And then uh, also that night, we have the Central West region for girls from 6 to 9 p.m. All of those online meetings will have an NCGLA staff member available to help you during that meet, those meetings. January 9th, we have the league-wide all-teams uh, scheduling meeting so that if you would like to schedule with teams that are not uh, in an adjacent county to you, uh, you can attend that meeting and try to get extra games for your schedule. Now, uh, we haven't determined the format for that meeting due to the size of the league. Uh, we are looking at a couple different formats. I do want to thank our uh, board members because they're doing some research for us on some of the latest technology for uh, the January 13th, this is when the shared workspace or the spreadsheet of games that everyone will be working on online will be locked. Uh, you can still schedule more games all the way up until when schedules are due, but we do like to lock this spreadsheet uh, on the 13th so that you can start to transfer it to uh, the NCJLA website. And then finally, your all of your home games will be due to the NCJLA webmaster by 11 p.m. on January 17th. 
And I'll pause here for a second. Are there any questions about the timeline? Okay. Uh, the regional meeting location. So as I've said, we are doing a virtual format when we did the regional uh, meetings back at the end of October. Uh, there was overwhelming support to uh, do the online version, so we will do that. We will uh, host those meetings via GoToMeeting. Uh, we've already started to create the Google Sheets for you guys to use and as a shared workspace. Uh, and you will submit the dates that you would like to have home games in advance for those spreadsheets. And then we encourage you guys during this virtual scheduling to uh, use the chat, maybe text or call. We will provide uh, the contact information for all the schedulers so that you're able to communicate the game needs. Uh, if for some reason a region does want to meet in person, uh, A, you would have to meet any of the county guidelines for meeting, uh, but we would help you facilitate an in-person meeting for your scheduling. You just need to communicate that to an NCGLA staff member so they know that everyone in the region wants to do in-person. Uh, meeting format. So uh, as in years past, we've always recommended that you uh, arrive 15 minutes early. Uh, now this time you'll log in, test your audio, uh, make sure that you're able to access all the documents. Uh, and then uh, each region's shared workspace will already have those teams and strength scores, the scheduler's contact information. Just do a quick glance over that and make sure that it's uh, correct for your club. Uh, one of the goals is to make sure that your uh, regional games are scheduled first. This year, we are not requiring conference play. We felt it was important to give everyone flexibility to play who they could, when they could, considering everything that's going on um, with COVID this year. Uh, we do ask that uh, the schedulers follow the flow of scheduling, where they only work on certain team schedules at certain times. Uh, that's just a professional courtesy to your fellow schedulers who may have teams that still need uh, to fill in their schedule. You know, we want to work together to make sure that all the kids have some games to play. Uh, for the uh, meetings that we discussed on the timeline, for the A in high school, uh, their game scheduling, like I said, will be from 6 to 7 p.m. and then the boys directly after. For the regional meetings for B, for 14UB, all the way down to 8U, uh, it'll be separated into boys and girls divisions. And we ask that the group goes from the oldest division all the way down to the youngest in 45 minute blocks. Now, if your region obviously doesn't have a 14B, you, you know, you don't need to wait. You can immediately go to the oldest division that your region has. Any questions about that process? Okay. Uh, virtual meeting etiquette. I think most people, you know, in this day and age, we've got everybody on, uh, you know, Zoom or uh, Google Meet or Teams or GoToMeeting, uh, we highly recommend that you have a camera. It's very important to be able to see fellow schedulers and take those uh, visual cues into who you're working with. Uh, if your region decides to use the raised hand method, uh, that would be helpful. So please try to make sure that you have a camera. Uh, most of us have mastered the art of hitting the mute button. And then it's really important that people know which club you're from. So if you're on camera and you can wear your club gear, go for it. We do ask that you put your club's name next to your name when you enter the meeting. Uh, that just helps people identify who they're working with. And then uh, feel free to use that chat, text, or call. Or you can just speak during the meeting to everybody if you want to. And as always, uh, there will be an NCGLA staff member there to help you at any time during that process. Uh, we have uh, a few other things that we just want to remind you. Uh, this year is going to be especially unique. And so if you do notice another scheduler that may be having a hard time, 
uh, you know, try to help them out. Every year there's a scheduler that immediately thought they had a plan and then, you know, it just isn't working out. So, um, you know, kind of put yourself in their shoes and try to help them uh, get those goals accomplished. Uh, when your group has a division completely scheduled, you don't have to wait the full 45 minutes. You can move on as long as everybody agrees to that. And one thing that we really want to emphasize is when you're working in a shared workspace, it's very important that you only edit your team's games or the data that you've entered. Um, you know, the A and high school schedulers have done this for a few years now, and the notes column gets filled with everything that you would want people um, to know, or, you know, if you ask if somebody can swap you a date, that's a great place to have that. By the end of this uh, virtual meeting, you should have 80 to 90% of your team schedules done. Uh, my first year scheduling online for girls high school, I was done in 20 minutes. It was amazing. So I hope that happens for you guys. We do ask that by the end of the meeting, uh, you are starting to confirm those games, that you don't go back and cancel and swap and move everything around. We do know that, you know, there'll probably be some situation this year where you have to do that. And just make sure you're communicating and uh, in agreement with the other schedulers. All right, so the club level prep. So this may be new for your club. It may not, depending on how you've scheduled in the, in the past, but these are good reminders of what we need to be able to schedule virtually. Uh, things to bring. You, you got to know the dates and times. So your home field, uh, what's the subsite name, if it's turf or grass, what times you have, uh, any time when your uh, team doesn't want to play, you know, blackout dates, uh, spring break. Uh, I don't know if there'll be much travel, but, you know, some people do like to take that opportunity. And then new for this year, if your club can host multiple games, uh, we learned through the regional meetings that some clubs have open field availability and they're willing to host other clubs. So if, if your club can do that, uh, make sure you have those dates in advance to share with everyone. And then uh, as in years past, scheduling appendix, uh, opponents you wanna play, anybody that you owe, uh, a home and away game, and then uh, any scheduling goals for your organization. I think that's very important this year because you know, some clubs may want to wait all the way till April to start, and that's totally okay. The scheduling appendix. So this is going to list uh, the dates for the league, uh, the opening weekend, play dates. Um, we probably will have a smaller scale play date, even though we are offering it. It'll be much smaller than what we have in the past. Uh, and regionally based because we need to keep uh, events, you know, within COVID guidelines. Also, uh, it'll say the last weekend for regular season play, uh, you know, the dates where our standings are calculated. And then if your team is going to have playoffs or a flighted tournament, it'll tell you that date. And then the end of season event date. That's when we have our actual tournament and championships. New for this year, we are extending games till May 31st. So if your club would like to play all the way to May 31st, you can schedule games. Uh, and the NCJLA will put those on the schedule and um, send to the officials organization. Any questions about uh, scheduling dates or uh, the scheduling appendix? Okay. Time blocks. These have not changed from uh, last year. They are the same. I will note that we are getting some feedback from the state of California that because of COVID, they are looking at a modification for games that reduce the amount of time spent on the field together. So um, there is talk of the state actually limiting our games to an hour. Uh, but that has not officially happened. Uh, there were some clubs that asked about the hour time block in order to get enough games for all of the teams in their club. So if your club would like to do that, you may. You just have to apply the 72-hour rule, 
and that means let your opponents know and the officials know and make sure everyone's in agreement at least 72 hours before the game if you'd like to shorten it to an hour. Any questions about shortening your games to an hour? All right. Uh, same club level prep as years past. Uh, you need to have a plan. Whatever that plan is, make sure you have it and everyone in your club is in agreement. You can use the calendars, um, you know, with pre-filled dates and field availability. If you have multiple schedulers, uh, just make sure that they have a plan for how they're going to work together. One of the most frustrating things is spending all that time with your opponent figuring out a, ga a, a game for a date and time, and then going back and finding out your fellow scheduler has booked that time. So uh, make sure there's open lines of communication and a plan for what you're going to do. Um, the other method is to use a shared spreadsheet within your club where multiple schedulers can see what fields are allocated to their teams that they're scheduling for. Uh, I will say that um, we have learned over the years that it's better to lock certain cells for certain schedulers so they can't go in and either make a mistake or double book. Uh, that way they know they can only um, access the ones that are for their team. Uh, the officials. So usually this slide, uh, you know, in our guidance is that you must schedule continuously. For 2021, it's a should. And that is specifically because of COVID and what that might do to your club in terms of uh, field availability. So um, our guidance is should, and uh, we are advising that you have at least 10 to 20 minutes between games. So you have time for disinfecting and for officials to do their uh, pre-game items with the next teams. Same guidance as before, uh, keep boys and girls games separate if they're on the same field. And then uh, don't schedule the eight U's that have no officials in between games with officials. If you are running into some trouble with scheduling continuously, uh, just let the assigners and the web, the NCJLA webmaster know that it's specifically because of code, you're doing your best, and um, you know that you just need that accommodation for this year. Uh, we are still applying the uh, boys and girls tenure referee cancellation policy. Many clubs have asked about, you know, reducing uh, the cost for the season, and one of the ways is to, uh, you know, cancel the tenure officials. So, um, you know, we really do want those junior officials to get that practice, but, you know, if it comes between paying fees and having a team, this should be an option for your club. Uh, we do offer uh, that the coach that would be the on-field referee, they can attend a official's rule interpretation for free. So they can, um, you know, learn how to spot different fouls and how to set them up. Uh, new for 2021, we do have the option for small-sided games format. Uh, this should be a club level discussion of, you know, do you want to do this for 2021? Uh, you should let your opponents know that you'd like to do this format at the scheduling meeting or at least 72 hours in advance of the game. Uh, they should know what they're coming into. And then for small sided, uh, the girls would be 8v8 or seven field players and a goalie, and the boys would be uh, 7v7, which is six field and one goalie. Um, one thing to note that if you do use the small sided format, it's not going to lead to a reduction in officials fees. Uh, and um, But you will get two officials for your game. Uh, the last thing for the club prep is confirming your home field information. So many of you may be using non-traditional field space coming up this year, uh, just because you know we've heard that a lot of schools probably are not going to let us use fields, so we'll be using county or city facilities. Double check 
uh, that the field names are on the home game submission template. If your home field is not on there, email the webmaster to see that it can be added. And just a note of caution, Arbiter Sports website, that controls all the names of the fields. Um, I know there's some common names for fields or nicknames for them, uh, but we can't use that. We have to use the official name for the actual field. So uh, if, you, if you would like to see about having a field name changed, you can contact Arbiter. Uh, or if you have a brand new field in your city that you'd like to use, uh, contact Arbiter about having that added. And of course, Dan Miller, our uh, webmaster, if you want to talk to him, he also can give you advice on having the fields added. Uh, this is just a quick look at the home game submission template. We sent this out uh, at the last club email blast. It has pre-populated dropdowns, so please make sure you're checking those. Uh, and we've created a how to use this PDF with some visuals of what it looks like. Uh, I highly recommend that after this uh, meeting that you go and check that template and just uh, play around and make sure that your home fields are there and the subsites and that you get a feel for how this works because all of our games will be submitted using this template. You no longer have to go into the NCGLA website and enter the games one by one. You can send the spreadsheet in. All right, so new for 2021. If you have not scheduled A in high school for the past three years, uh, I am excited to introduce you to the online scheduling process that we've been using. Uh, there are six steps to scheduling online, and there are some common terms that we use. The host date, uh, that is the day that your club has a reserved field that you can schedule games. Pretty straightforward. The host date entry. This is where you're going to work on a shared spreadsheet. And it is uh, entered in the month, month, day, day, year, year, year format. And uh, we don't do the exact time that you are going to have the game, we give a window of time so that your club has some flexibility with start and end times. So it'll have the uh, date and then it'll have the AM or PM. The other thing that's not required is the name of the field. That's a internal club discussion. Uh, and so uh, you do not need to enter that on there unless, unless you really wanna brag that you've got a stadium with turf and lights and, um, you know, that you want people to come for a special event. When we use the term locked, that means that the spreadsheet will not accept any edits or changes. Uh, we want it to be visible to everybody, but we're not letting changes go through. Now, there are a couple tabs that are very important during the online scheduling process. The all teams regional schedule tab. This is where all of the divisions for your region are represented and you can see all of the host dates for every team on this tab. It is the best place to figure out what everybody has to offer and where your team might want to go play. And below here are the names of those um, regional spreadsheets. The Division All Team Scheduling tab, this is where the scheduling of the actual games will happen for each division. So, you know, in the Northwest region, maybe we have a boys 14B veteran and a 14B rookie. And so the, each of those divisions will have their own tab for actually scheduling games. And I'll show you guys a visual of this here later on, um, but these are just some of the common terms. And then commissioners, these are volunteers who you can uh, request to get help with or to answer questions or to help with access, just really anything that you need during this whole process. We have volunteers who are dedicated to making sure that your scheduling experience is uh, a positive one. All right, step one. You are going to confirm your scheduler's contacts. 
their teams and strength scores. When you register teams, we um, ask you questions about the strength of the team and that translates to a score. So we take all that information, put it on one nice tab for you guys to access for your region. And all we're asking is that you guys double check that you know that information is correct because we want to make sure that anybody who has an email uh, in this column has access to the spreadsheet. If they're not listed on here, they're going to have to email uh, an NCJLA staff member to then get added as a scheduler. So we want to make sure we get the right people working in the right space. Step two, you're going to enter the host dates, dates that you can uh, have other teams come visit and play. Uh, and it's gonna have the format that we talked about where it's the name of the team, AM or PM, and then uh, whether it's a round robin, double header, or single game. And then we have an example here for you guys. The Santa Rosa Steelheads, it's boys high school varsity, they want to play a game in the AM and it's a single game. Here's an example of the all teams regional schedule tab. So this is a sample of Central West. These are the uh, 14 boys, 14 UB veterans. These are the days that um, we've pre-populated for that region. And, and I just want to say, you know, if you want to play a game on Monday night, totally fine. You want to stick to just a Saturday, Sunday schedule, that's fine as well. This is the tab where you just have everybody's availability to host. And here you can see we have, um, you know, Oakland is going to have a double header. It's in the PM. We've got here for 14B Rookie. Uh, the Diablo Scorpion Stingers want to play a single game p.m. in the afternoon. And then their other team, Diablo Scorpion Swarm, they want to play a single game that day as well. And they want to play in the a.m. Are there any questions about what happens on this tab of the shared workspace? All right, uh, the next step is to review the all teams regional schedule tab and plan. So you're gonna take a look at all of that stuff on the spreadsheet and figure out who you would like to go visit when. Um, it's also a good idea as much as we you know, have a plan A, always have a plan B. Uh, I've seen a lot of schedulers that get upset that they didn't get the one spot that they wanted. Uh, so, you know, make sure you have a plan A and a plan B. And then really for this season, try to find a home and away date. We, you know, the feedback from the state of California has been they really don't want a lot of travel out of region. Um, you know, a, a couple games are fine, but they'd really like to see people stay within their area. So work on those home and away dates to see how you can help one another. And then uh, between January 4th and your region scheduling date is when you can do this step three where you take a look at everybody's host dates and figure out what um, games you want to play. Just of note, uh, we've also had times where uh, a club is upset that somebody doesn't want to travel to their host date or nobody wants to play them on a specific date. If that happens, uh, other teams are not required to play you, sorry, uh, but you can move your host date, you know, um, if there's another weekend that works better and more teams are available, you're open to uh, or welcome to actually switch your host dates so that you can find opponents. Uh, the other thing we've learned over the years is, uh, you know, don't try to have a game every single weekend. Uh, we want to make sure everybody has a chance to have a home game. So really prioritize which days you really, really want to have a home game. If you're one of those clubs that has open field availability every single weekend, that's something you'd probably want to put in the notes section for a date to just say, hey, you know, we're leaving this open for other people, uh, but we're willing to host every single weekend if clubs need us to. 
And then uh, another thing we've learned is don't change dates too frequently. Um, if you do that, it confuses other schedulers. You know, if they have a plan and they, they see one date and then it's changed, uh, it, it can confuse them and then they don't know what really they're looking for in terms of playing you. So it's, it's very important that you have some type of plan for what your club can do this year. And lastly, you know, uh, at sitting at various scheduling meetings over the years in person, uh, the one task that I see schedulers spending a lot of time walking between other groups is trying to figure out who has open spaces. When you look at this spreadsheet, you're going to see everybody's availability in one spot instead of, instead of having to walk between different groups of people and you know, ask them the same question over and over. So we hope that this uh, speeds up the process for you. All right, step four, you are going to start scheduling games. So once you know what everybody has to offer, you're gonna go to the division for your team. Uh, so, you know, like the 12B veteran, all team schedule tab, you go there and you can start to sign up in the game spot to be able to play when someone is hosting. Uh, it's very important that you do not change a game to accommodate a different opponent unless all parties agree. So, um, you know, like we said, make a plan A, make a plan B, uh, but really have those lines of communication open and be upfront with your fellow schedulers about what you need. Another a point during this process when you're signing up for games, it's very important to pay attention where you are traveling to so you don't end up playing the same teams multiple times, especially if your team is willing to do a double header or maybe a round robin, uh, or maybe you wanna to go to a jamboree. Uh, it's important that you communicate and, and keep track of who your opponents are when you're on the road. And then uh, last but not least, you know we want you guys to leave 10 to 20 minutes between games for disinfecting. So uh, just be mindful of that when booking double headers or uh, round robins this year. Here's an example of the uh, division all teams schedule tab of what that would look like where you sign up for uh, games with other teams who are hosting. You can see in this column, we've got some teams that want to play on a Friday night. Uh, they've put their full name in there, the Livermore Phantoms Purple Boys 12 BB. They want to have a single game and they want to have it uh, in the afternoon. And the Diablo Scorpion Fire uh, 12 BB team has signed up to be the visiting team that's going to play them. And Livermore has added in the uh, you know notes special request section that they're going to play under the lights, and they've uh, confirmed that they definitely want to have this game, and it's going to be at 7 p.m. Um, one thing to note: uh, sometimes people will put you know parking is uh, is tough. Make sure you know you plan extra time. Uh, also, here you can see. Diablo Scorpion Venom has a single game. It's going to be in the PM. They're going to play Delta Breeze. And they've told them it's going to be at Snake Park where there's a grass field with lights. Here um, on the Saturday line, we have the Livermore team wants to have a round robin. They want to have it start in the afternoon. And Delta Breeze has signed up to come to the round robin and so is San Ramon Raptors. Uh, and it's uh, the Raptors have here that they'd like to start after 1 p.m. if possible. So this is just a good example of all the things that you can have in one space for everybody to see, and it really speeds up your ability to find opponents and uh, book games that you'd like to play. Any questions about this? Okay.
All right, step five, you are going to confirm your home games by January 13th. Uh, so there is a notes column, which we just showed on the example, all the things that you can put in there. Uh, start time is really important. The uh, host team, if you're gonna have a double header around Robin, you really need to communicate the order of when people are gonna play. If you are uh, having a round robin, whether it's a three team round robin or a four team, uh, it's very important to communicate who will be the home team when the host club is not playing. Because if you're the home team, you have to put that game on your schedule. It's not the host club that's gonna put it on the schedule. So, um, and the NCJLA staff can help you with that if you're not sure if you're if you're getting the right information, please reach out in the chat uh, during the meeting and make sure that um, you know you double check on that. Step six. So once you you're done scheduling and you you know you've got enough games for your team uh, and this the uh, scheduling workspace is locked, you're then going to put all of your games that you have on that locked spreadsheet, you're then going to put it on the home game submission template. You do not have to use the league athletics entry form. You do not need to enter in every game one by one. So um, I hope that helps people. I know that was a tedious process that we got a lot of feedback about. Uh, just some things to keep in mind with using the uh, submission template and uh, you know submitting those games. Make sure that you're minimizing any changes. Uh, you know if it's a venue, that's fine, or maybe the start time you know changes a little bit. Uh, but we really don't want to have anything moved around unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, this year, instead of scheduling being from you know December to mid January, we're we're really compressing it into two weeks. So it's very important that we uh, communicate quickly if there is going to be a change. All right, so that is the online portion. There's a few special scheduling situations for uh, this year that we'd like to review with you guys. Uh, where to find extra games so let's say uh you know maybe your team is really cautious about scheduling this year and you want to push it back to maybe mid-march if then everything opens up and you're like well i'd really like to get some extra games so uh we are going to have the have a game need a game google sheet on our website for you to check uh, and you can post things there if you'd like to get a game on there it will open up after January 9th, after all the regional scheduling meetings are complete. Uh, but we hope that'll help facilitate you guys quickly finding uh, games uh, to fill your schedule. Uh, I, I remember the days of emailing five and six different people separately to see if I could get one extra game. And it was, you know, two and three hours of work versus, you know, if we had had this sheet and just posting that. The other thing uh, to help you find extra games, if your club or your neighboring club is able to host a jamboree, I know that uh, South County Outlaws were um, very adamant. I think uh, Monterey Tribe as well said that, you know, they have open field availability and would love to host. Uh, if you are a fortunate club that can do that, we have a sheet for you to post uh, when you can host those types of events and uh, the contact information for other clubs to sign up to come and play you guys. So we hope these two resources will help with finding extra games. Uh, scheduling games versus non-division teams. So, uh, you know, if you have an A team or a high school team that's looking to round out your schedule, we do encourage uh, play between uh, different divisions. It's um, sometimes, you know, age division would be appropriate if you, you have a highly skilled team and uh, they want to play uh, uh, up uh, age division, that would be okay. As long as they play by the lower division rules. Uh, but we really do encourage you to play non-divisional games, uh, especially if those teams are in your region and they need something uh, to fill out their schedule. They, um, 
there's no maximum games for this year. Uh, but um, I, I mean, schedule who you can. Also, these games do not count towards your end of season rank. So they truly are friendly games to uh, play the game. Uh, scheduling games versus non-NCJLA teams. Uh, we have had some Southern California teams ask if they can play us. Uh, even the uh, High Sierra League has asked in the past, so we thought it'd be good to give you guys some instruction on how to schedule those. Uh, if you are an NCJLA member team, uh, you do have an officials contract. So if you are the hosting team and you are the home team on that game you'll have officials you would enter your opponents the non-ncjla team for the visiting team on the home game submission template when you send it to the ncjla uh, a few things to note that because the visiting team is tbd you will need to inform them of any changes, like if you change the start time or the field, uh, and you will need to be prepared to pay both official fees for that non-NCJLA uh, game. Um, these games do not count towards your team's end of season rank, and these games will show on your NCJLA schedule as TBD, so uh, you will be able to see it, but it won't say who the team is that you're playing. If you'd like further instruction on this, we do have a scheduling checklist for non-league games that you can um, use when you're talking to the non-NCGLA team, so you know you go over all the important, por important points of scheduling with them. Uh, and, and if you're planning on playing a non-NCJLA team as the visiting team, so you're going to their fields, uh, you will want to ask your opponent to coordinate officials and ask them what the rate is for the officials' game fee. Um, we, we don't have any visibility into what those teams are doing, uh, so uh, I would highly recommend that you check out the uh, checklist for non-league games to make sure that you're covering all your bases. Are there any questions about this portion? This is kind of new. I think in the past only the high school division has done this. So, no? Okay. Uh, let's see. The RPI for A and high school games. So, this is not changing for this year. Uh, we felt that it was important to make sure that. You know, there was still no advantage to running up the score or winning all your games. Uh, we, the board felt that the formula was appropriate. Um, and we do encourage that if you think there's going to be a big difference between the skill levels that, you know, the coaches get together and figure out how to make it more of a fun game. You know, maybe move some B-level players up or, uh, you know, put a goal count on the game, you know, that you're not going to go over. And if you do have more questions about RPI, uh, we have the operations guide link here and the uh, frequently asked questions about it to help with uh, how that would affect your ranking for end of season. For the B levels, we are doing flighted tournaments for them. So we will be pulling their rank from League Athletics. The League Athletics site calculates it by um, First is the percentage of wins versus games. The second point is the strength of schedule or you know, the cumulative strength of teams beaten. And then the third point is head-to-head -head, um, ties. So um, you know, with this year, without having conferences and really wanting to be flexible because of COVID, uh, we do want to recommend that coaches and schedulers really pay attention to you know try to avoid poor sportsmanship you know if you feel like your team is just doing way better you know maybe call a timeout and talk to the other coach about how you can make it uh, more of a fun game for everybody uh, and then uh, if you are a scheduler and you do have visibility into your team being a little bit stronger than most 
uh, you know, offer to play a variety of games to make sure that you're getting a more evenly balanced, uh, you know, your standings being calculated. And then again, please, 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 because of this year and just the uncertainty, please talk to your opponents, coaches, um, and, and try to make it an even playing field for everybody. Uh, you know, we just want kids to have fun and get back out on the field. All right, so um, we're just about to the end here. Um, you know, why are we doing online scheduling? Uh, this makes it a little bit easier for everyone, you know, creates that even playing field, you know, where people from Chico all the way, you know, down to, you know, Menlo Atherton, uh, they can see and participate in scheduling. It's not a, you know, burden on people to drive two hours to meet with others. And then it does give insight to the NCGLA staff and, and the board of what your clubs actually need for scheduling because we can see what you're trying to build as the scheduling process um, progresses. And then really uh, the online process reduces the time spent emailing and calling back and forth, um, you know, that we used to do in years past. And then obviously, you know, with COVID, the, you know, everyone's using virtual trainings or virtual meetings more frequently. And so uh, we felt it was best to just plan for virtual and know that we would be able to do it and wouldn't have to, you know, change times or meeting space. Um, some best practices, we do recommend that you review the training with your assistant schedulers. Um, it's good to have assistant schedulers, people that help you with this. Uh, it, it helps with continuity within your program to know that schedulers are uh, trained and see what happens. It's also for the good of the sport. You know, uh, growing clubs may only have one person scheduling for everybody. And, you know, if we go to an in-person meeting, they can only schedule so much at one time. And being online allows them to schedule for multiple teams at a time. Uh, another piece with training, you know, it reduces the amount of changes and cancellations. We want to make sure people are aware of what's requested of them. Uh, and then, you know, we really want to connect with strugglers or strugglers. We really want to connect with schedulers who are struggling uh, with the experienced uh, NCGL staff or, you know, with other schedulers in their region that might be able to help them and, um, you know, just show them examples of how it's done. So. Uh, in years past, you know, we'd all be in a very large gymnasium and the NCGLA staff would be walking around. Uh, the online process allows us to intervene a lot quickly, a lot more quickly uh, to be able to help you. And then finally, the last slide here, who to contact. We have a large list of people who are willing to help your club uh, if something is uh, amiss or uh, you just need some support. Uh, we encourage you to reach out to uh, any one of us. And with that, I will open it up to any questions. I guess, uh, are there any questions in the chat? Nope. Okay, well, I guess we've done a good job of prepping you for the NCGLA scheduling that will take place uh, beginning in January. And we hope you all take this information back to your clubs and have enough time to prep. Uh, there is no pressure to get this done within you know, a few weeks time. Uh, we encourage you guys to take some time off in December uh, with family. And then when we come back from the new year, we will start to look towards a warm and sunny spring. All right, guys, have a good night.